All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. It's uh, been another pretty good week of fishing in Southern California. We are definitely transitioning into fall mode now though. Uh, we had some wind over the weekend. Water's cooling down in a lot of places, but uh, still some good options, inshore and offshore to be had. So uh, let's head out to the map. All right, heading up to the Channel Islands. Um, that bluefin that was seen up there last week, uh, a lot of the water that that stuff was in got kind of cooled down considerably by the uh, wind we had. I'm not saying that that fish isn't up there anymore, but based on what I'm seeing on the uh, temp chart, I would say that it probably slid back down uh, just like it slid up when the water warmed up up that way. But you know, you might get lucky and head out there and, uh, and run into some stuff. You never know with bluefin. Uh, boats up there are mostly fishing rockfish now. It's a uh, really the time of year to do that. And we've got some decent weather up there Sunday. Saturday looks a little windy. Uh, Santa Cruz Island will probably be fine both days. You can probably fish roads on Sunday if the weather holds up. Um, private boaters anyway. Sport boats, they go out and that stuff anyway. Um, it's getting to be time for, you know, the a lot of the boats are starting to target lingcod. I don't know if they spawn at this time of year or what, but it's a, it's a good time of year to target lingcod. And the uh, the sport boats up that way have been uh, have already been running some trips against some nice ones. But there's some some of the boats I know the Aloha Spirit and some of the other boats have like lingcod special type trips booked. Those are a lot of fun if you want to head up and do that. And uh, good chance for private boaters to uh, go up and catch some lings as well. I'm hoping to have a weather window during the week here and. Make a drive up to Santa Barbara and either run to Rosa and Miguel or up towards uh, Conception and try those out. At the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing a, a, a lure rigging uh, thing that I like for lings and also wintertime sand bass. So uh, stay tuned to the end to, to check out what's going on with that. Um, heading down, really not a lot of coverage. Uh, Nick, SBI, that area up there, um, I'm sure it's good rock fishing. You definitely still have a chance to yellowtail. I know there's squid around at different islands now and even on the coast, I think. So I think you got a chance, you know, getting some squid and catching yellowtail with it. I know that Nacho's Barge in Long Beach has squid now and then. Uh, you'd probably want to call ahead and check. But you take squid to any of these islands, you probably have a good chance of catching a yellowtail. If you go to a place like Clemente or Catalina, you can probably catch more sardines as well. I know that the uh, Freelance had like 40 yellows at Catalina the other day. Um, that was, uh, I think, over the weekend or maybe on Friday. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, nobody's really been at Clemente. Uh, the guys that are fishing tuna offshore, and it's been too rough for the bass guys to go over there. And I really haven't heard a whole lot. I still there's still a little bit of yellowfin on the front of the island, um, and that bluefin's out behind it. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, inside of Catalina, like I said, the freelance had those yellows. There's yellows to be caught, but you're mostly gonna catch bonita, and bass, and rockfish this time of year. Uh, the water temperatures still look pretty good at cats, so there's no reason you couldn't catch a yellowtail, but I don't, it's not really a prime time of year to go there and catch one. Um, if I were going, I'd look at the, uh, at the Farnsworth Bank. I've had some good fall fishing out there in the past. I don't know if anybody's been out there or what they've caught out there, but uh, this time of year you get good yo-yo fishing out there. But if you do fish in that area, you can only keep uh, yellowtail and bonita. Everything else needs to go back. That's in a, a marine closure in there, so you can't keep bass or rockfish or anything. Um, yeah, you know, all weekend the weather will be good for on the, you know, the fish cat. Shouldn't be an issue either day for private boaters. Um, on the coast, really not a lot of coverage either. I know the sport boats that are uh, fishing are fishing rockfish mostly. You see some real, real nice chilies and stuff like that being caught on a victory, which uh, makes me want to go catch chilies, except you have to use bait to catch them. I don't really want to do that. Um, they are a great eating fish, though. Uh, I know Benny Florentino fished the coast the other day and he had some calicos and nice sand bass for his charter. Um, boats that I did a pointer still getting some sand bass and calicos and uh, the, the uh, boats down in San Diego, I really haven't heard from. I think they're catching calicos, but they might just be fishing rockfish as well. Um, I'll probably head up to PV again this uh, tomorrow, Thursday. I'm hoping that big swell that we had uh, earlier this week on Monday didn't wipe the whole area out, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, just kind of steady, not too exciting fall fishing overall up this way. Um, heading offshore, the uh, 
that area with the bluefin between, you know, with the East End of Clemente and Tanner and Cortez is still, that water held up really well through the, uh, through that wind we've had. And uh, although it's going to be kind of windy out there this weekend, it's not going to be too windy for sport boats. And uh, some of the four pack boats that head out and risk it are probably going to go out there and load up as well. But a lot of really big bluefin being caught out there, fish over 300 pounds coming in. It's, it's not wide open. Um, but you have, you know, a good shot, and I mean, it's your best bet right now to catch a big tuna to head out that way. Um, there's been some tuna seen and caught uh, inside as well. Um, I know in the Clemente Ridge there was fish earlier, and uh, I heard yesterday there was fish just, you know, outside of uh, Dana Point, uh, one of the local banks down there up foaming around. I guess uh, my friend Jonathan said one of the whale watch boats found that stuff. I don't know exactly where it was, but somewhere out of Dana. Um, that fish probably isn't even there now. It, the stuff moves around a lot, but it just shows you to keep your eye open if you're running around anywhere, uh, especially in the afternoon or on a slack tide late in the morning. That stuff could pop up. You know, if I'm running and you know, say I'm running to Clemente or Cat or anything like that this time of year, I'm always keeping an eye on my water temp still. And if you see an area that's got a bunch of shearwaters rafted up or some turn picking, Maybe worth it to slow down and take a look, or at least make a mental note of where it was on your GPS so you can run back through that zone in the afternoon and see anything materialize. More often than not, it won't, but you never know. You might be one of the boats that stumbles into uh, big formers of bluefin when you do. Um, down in San Diego, the bites kind of slowed down that way. Um, looking at the temperature chart, the water on the local banks out of San Diego has gotten pretty streaky, cooled down a bit, and it's, it's still warmer in U.S. waters than it is in Mexican waters. That being said, there's uh, warmer water down off of uh, Ensenada, down through a Colonnet area down there, and there's yellowfin in that, and the boats that are going down there are doing well on it, getting, you know, some boats are getting limits of yellowfin, but the uh, full day boats and the boat fishing locally are, you know, they're getting hit and miss, getting some Dorado, getting some yellowfin. Uh, no big shakes, but, uh, you know, that can improve any time. Who knows, you know, there's not a lot of coverage out there, so there might be a lot of fish somewhere nearby that no one's run over yet. So that's the thing, there's only so many boats out looking right now. So I wouldn't count that out completely. But uh, yeah, that's basically what's happening. It's, uh, you know, here we are almost Halloween. Still catching tuna, bluefin, yellowfin, dorado. Can't complain about that. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the workshop here and show you the bait I was talking about. All right, I understand that me showing you this bait like this is not going to be very indicative of what I'm doing rigging-wise here, so I'm going to put up a picture of this bait uh, after I do the video. What I've done is I've taken a, a three-ounce lead head and I've cut the hook shank off, or the, the whole bend of the hook and everything else, so I just have a, a straight shank of the hook coming out, and I've, uh, using silver solder, drilled a hole and I put an owner, no, it's a, a trocar a spring lock, that you can buy, it's, uh, I'll write it down, I think I don't remember what they're called. Um, it's like what you'd use on a weedless swim bait by Trocar. And I've embedded that in there, and I've added a split ring with a solid ring and an assist hook. This is a double assist hook, some of you single. Here's just some that I had left over from Taddy gave me. What this allows you to do is that you can screw your bait into this lead head now and you have a bait that doesn't get pulled down with hooks that don't get levered out of the fish's mouth. And one of the worst parts about fishing rockfish especially, this is a, a great lingcod bait or big sand bass bait, the eight inch uh, MC slug on a three ounce lead head. You drop down 300 feet with this bait and you get a bite, you miss it and it pulls the pants down so it's backed off the thing. You're completely wasted that cast or that drop, you have to wind all the way up. With this they can't pull it off. That's the nice thing. The other nice thing with this is that a lot of your bites on this lure that come on a sink, baits fall in like this. Let me grab a standard uh, lead head real quick here. So if you have a lure on this lead head and it's falling this way and a bass eats it or a rockfish eats it like that, and you set the hook, that hook is pointing in the wrong direction. You're not gonna hook it. So a lot of times you'll be dropping down, you get ripped on the sink, you put it in the gear, you swing, it's tight for a second and it comes off can't figure out why it's happening is because they eat it head first and now your hook's pointing in the wrong direction. With the slug, on this, on this setup here, whatever bait you have on here, 
they grab this, these hooks aren't fixed, now they're always pointing in the right direction. And then you're hooking your, hooking your fish with that. Um, I love this slug because it sinks fast and produces bigger bites, especially when we're fishing link cods or red. But um, sometimes they don't want bigger baits like that. So the nice thing about this thing is it's modular. You can put any bait you want on it. Here's a swim bait. You can put on a curly tail grub. You can put on a, a gulp, anything like that. And uh, it's like a 100% hookup ratio if they eat this thing on the, on the drop, which most do. So when I'm fishing these things for rockfish, um, I'll clean up my work area here a little bit. When I'm fishing these things for rockfish, you think of rockfish as just hanging out on the bottom, but they don't. I mean, rockfish, link cod, reds, things like that, they're aggressive fish. They're no different than a calico bass or anything else. They are aggressively feeding on stuff and they're coming up off the bottom and chasing bait fish around. It's not like all the bait fish on the in rockfish land lay on the bottom, like a, a strip of squid. Now they're eating the same stuff that shallower fish are eating, so they're used to chasing down bait. So I'll drop this lure down on a slack line, let it hit the bottom, pop it once or twice, big pop the rock. They'll wind up five, ten cranks really fast and throw it back at free spool. And you'd be amazed at how often after that five, ten cranks, the minute you put it in free spool, that fish is on it. It could be a red, it could be a ling. I've had, you know, fish follow this thing up. So let's say, you know, you have a, a, a reel that gets uh, 36 inches of line per crank and you do 10 cranks, you brought that bait up 30 feet off the bottom and you kick it in free spool and you're immediately bit. Shows you that these rockfish are pretty aggressive and they'll go for that and when they bite like that way, it's always a head strike because they try and take it like that. So having this hook configuration gets them hooked. If you're just dragging your bait along the bottom, this is a lot of guys do, they drop down like, okay, just dragging along. The fish grab it by here. They're nowhere near a hook, even on a whatever lead head. So, if you move your bait fast and aggressively, the fish will bite it fast and aggressively and they won't just grab on and pull your pants down or come off when you swing because they didn't get the hook. Rockfish are not lazy, they just look weird when they come up because they live deep. So don't treat them as a lazy fish, treat them as an aggressive apex predator and you can uh, have a lot of fun targeting them. So that's about it for this week guys. Uh, like I said a couple weeks ago, if you have any ideas you want covered, let me know. I'm happy to cover it. and. Uh, I'm working on covering some of the stuff that you guys already asked for, and I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great weekend.